Good morning. This is Judy at Artistic Artifacts. Um, <clears throat> sorry <laughs> about the coughing. We decided we'd, not, we'd delete that and keep going. So if you missed it, it's good. <laughs> um, as I said, we just live our life of bloopers here. Um, we don't hide them from you at all. We're here this morning and we continue the Mid-Atlantic Shop Hop and have had many, many visitors at Artistic Artifacts. Very, very thrilled to see everybody and to hear what they're doing and where they've gone and how many stores they've gone to. Um, if your store owners haven't thanked you enough, I'm going to thank you again for making that trip to your local quilt store, whether it's for a shop hop or whether it is for something that you need, some thread, some fabric, some inspiration. Um, we thank you because we as quilt owners, uh, store owners are only as successful as our customers coming in the door or emailing us or for us, Artistic Artifact, we will sell online and ship anywhere. So um, thank you for being customers and keeping this, really this craft, um, this in its the craft, there's many, many people who are professional quilters and dressmakers. So we have to all participate to keep it alive so um there was my soapbox for this morning unplanned spontaneous anyway thank you the, we just i didn't realize how much i missed the shop hops before the pandemic until we had this one and i really did miss it so we've enjoyed meeting you so one of the things that we've done and again thank you for your participation is that we have taken a drawing for a 50 dollars gift certificate to artistic artifacts and as I can hear my staff go, well, Judy's committed to one, but she's been drawing two every week. So let's just continue. We got this week and next week to go for the middle line chop up and let's just celebrate. And so we will pull two names today. So um, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. I have to make sure it's mixed up. <laughs> All right, Jennifer Dragoon, D R A G O U N of Pennsylvania. And she is a Bernina girl, but did not leave us an email address. Um, so we'll try calling you once, otherwise, we'll draw another name and it'll go to the next person. We need those email addresses. Okay, because, you know, that's kind of how we communicate nowadays. Don't always agree with it, but that's what happens. Uh, middle, I'm trying to get to the... Uh, okay, here we go. Second one, Annette Fong of York, Pennsylvania. Another Bernina girl, and she has completed the form. So, I'm going to draw one more, because if Jennifer... We'll get a phone call to you. If we don't hear from you, this is in the person that gets your gift certificate. Knowing you, she probably gets it anyway. <laughs> oh. Beth. Wow, I can't read this one. R-E-U-N-I-N-G. So, okay. We will go with that for now and see what happens with those but again thank you very much i'll put it down here okay so we started this kind of project oriented project in process with working with a gel press plate so we printed on paper and we printed on fabric so I um, always love this process because you just never know what's going to happen. And the ones I did take two that um, I started on the live and then I printed like maybe two or three more layers. Those were the winter lives like January and February, I believe. That are We did them then, but we also did a short one this month. Yeah. But the but other we, ones with the January. fabric fodder and, and are on our YouTube channel. Yes, yeah. correct. Um, all right. So in my mind, I like this one. You can see there's blue in here. There's white. So what happens is I do this one, leave the stencil down. So I'm getting the color. Then I pull the stencil up 
and this is what happens. So um, it is kind of cool. This was a different stencil also. So I have a, definitely a three or four layers. This one, I'm not done with this. I don't like it. Um, it, it went a couple. This is actually a rubber stamp that I stamped on top of the fabric with the white. This is some silver in here with a little bit of a stencil, but I don't see any <clears throat> real pattern. So this is kind of ick to me. This one I like. So what the easiest example, I mean, you can use this in your artwork that is goes on a wall. It is washable. This is text artistic artifacts textile paint. Um, but whenever you have painted surfaces, you don't want to wash them a whole, whole lot. So, um, I, you know, just they're perfect for uh, something that goes on the wall or decorative card or decorative ATC or decorative postcard. I use them in my postcards. So that's kind of the idea was I was trying to give you a small project that you could use. So what I do is I'm working with Pelon um, 70. And I don't know, it took me years to know this, but Pelon 70 means it has no interfacing on it. Pelon 71 means there's one side of interfacing on this thick Pelon. Pelon 72 means it's double-sided fusible. It took me years. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what it means. So I usually have a bunch of this stuff. So It's a thick one, right? It's a thick one. Um, and so I did that same kind of piece. I had a different piece of fabric and I had that same kind of piece. So I had a darker color and then I had a lighter color where I was working with, um, this was straight off the gel plate. This was kind of the second pull, which is usually always lighter. So then, um, I did, uh, let me just figure out these. I'll do these, uh, cause I like, I have a lot of to show you. Um, so a lot of times I will actually leave this together and cut my pelon like this and do my free motion stitching or my pattern stitching together as a big piece. This time I decided I was going to cut them in um, two and a half inch widths because when you do ATCs, they're two and they're three and a half tall by two and a half wide. So I then stitched them, as you can see, don't look too close. Um, it's, I did with some turquoise, it's a 50 weight thread. I use a 90 needle, works like a dream. And you can use pattern stitches on this instead of doing your, I use my Bernina stitch regulator. So then now I have pieces and I'm gonna cut them, as I said, into three and a half tall. So if you look at this piece, I took this one and I added buttons to it. So um, I, I am a collector of pearl buttons. This is actually how I work and store them. Um, I'm, I'm sorry you won't find them in the store because I keep them. So there's one that I did with that pattern. Um, here's another one. I had these funky plastic little beads kind of um and like i just flowers or something yeah there and i put them on there and then this one you know i am not afraid of sewing pieces together so a lot of times you end up with you know like the little end or something that's and i sew it together so that i get an extra atc and this is eq printables and I just had a whole page full of butterflies and I printed that off. I put fusible on it and went and fused it to here. But you can see I just took two pieces and I zigzagged them together to make it longer. Um, so let's see. Then now you, you said you use the confetti. Um, yes, I used 50. I did not 12 works. Um, but I did not, I, for some reason, couldn't find the right color in 12. So I just went if you with have 50. one of these packs, yeah, I must not. <laughs> I must not have those packs because I don't know where all my 12 weight went. Um, so this one, oh, did I not do any with that one? Oh, I guess maybe I didn't do any one. I cut them 
I have them so um, I do do that now to finish the backs because this is a little different than working on paper I will put a cardstock on it and sew around it a zigzag straight stitch decorative stitch whatever so they're technically not quite finished yet um, the another one I did was I had some strips of um, this is a woven cotton like a shot cotton so I was like okay well I always start with white so what happens if I don't start with white and I ended up with white this time which is really unusual but um, so I did again I had two strips one I just did waves with stitching I seem to be on a color roll with this turquoisey blue and so this one is this and then I had a piece that I just did an over color of um, white and this is what happened with that one so it was a stencil it was the stencil was the blue the white was just kind of an over coverage there's lots of things going on in the gel press world with uh, um, opaque white and pulling different types of prints which is I, I'm looking forward to practicing but so here's we have um, sequins which artistic artifacts has always been queen of the sequins we have always had lots of them um, any show i went to i was known for sequins so these are all that what's available to you and if you notice when i put a sequin on i use a bead to hold the sequin in place so i'm coming my needles coming up going through the bead and back down through a different hole and then that holds that in place and I, and I didn't fill it, so you can see it's just a little bit. So you could use our bead mixes, which are custom bead mixes that I make with all different types. You could use a, a leaf on your ATC, um, whatever you wanted to do. So those are available, probably, I think we're up to like 13 or 14 colors. Um, so there you have that. And so it's... <sighs> nice way to just play I don't um, you just have to the whole paint process is just playing and you can always paint over it again if you're not crazy about it like this one I'll do more with it and I'll just keep adding paint so um, are there any questions so far no okay so then um, we had these I'm just thinking about how you're, the colors you're using. <laughs> Go with Seth's Live Out Loud uh, fabric. fabric. That must have been, I was channeling the Live Out Loud fabric. This is a pit quilt that Chris made. Um, we are going to kit it when Seth's fabric comes in. We expect, we, we already are taking pre-orders on his fabric. So you can go ahead and sign up to ensure that you get some of it. We also have room in his lecture and his classes on the weekend. So um, he is coming in the third weekend of September. So we'll have a lecture and it's a really great up close conversation with Seth as an artist and where he has taken his original artwork and now created some licensing with it, which is absolutely awesome. We will also have free spirit sample quilts that other artists have done, as well as um, a, we plan a couple of kits with his fabrics, I think one or two. So, and then I'll get to do my improv with the scraps. So I'm looking forward to that, but it's beautiful, isn't it? Which pattern was it? Do you know, Chris? It's a it's Villa called, Rosa. It's a Villa Rosa. It was a really easy, almost like a stack and whack. I think it's called Acrobat. Okay. Acrobatic, something like that. Yeah. Hmm, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah it went together. So, yeah, yeah, and then they quilted it with these more the stars, triangle stars, yeah. sharp points. It's really great. Okay, so someone asked whether we host swaps where people mail ATCs to us. We we don't. We do an in person AT swap, ATC swap that happens the third month, third Sunday of the month. And it's with our Judy's Altered Minds, our Jams art group. But if you look on Facebook, there's, there's a lot of them groups. that are actually doing mailing. Um, do you know what Sue's is, Sue is called? Oh, there she's, we got the, Martha brought us the pattern. 
Um, no, Seuss is a Seuss private is one, and they haven't opened it yet, but there okay. are lots of them lots on of them there. there. When I searched, there, yeah. were, there were tons of yeah. them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely do that. And, and as I said, we, we do fabric and we do paper, so it's really kind of cool. Now, the next thing I did was I had, again, another sheet of fabric that was um, kind of a positive and a negative is that I don't always look at it as a whole piece of fabric. So what I did was I cut it up and I wove it. So, um, and it is on the same um, Pellon fabric. And so you can see this was the purple side. And then I'm really excited. What I did on these is that I used the 990. I took the fern kind of leaf and I jumbo stitched it. I just, I love the whole jumbo stitch on the 990. I'm so excited. I know some of you have had it on other machines. We, um, I am not familiar with it until we got to the 990. So I'm really, really excited. So that is the one that I did here. And I haven't cut this one apart because I wanted you to sh see the size of it. So a question uh -huh. on when do you, <clears throat> do you put Misty Fuse on the back of the fabric before putting it on the Pellon? Yes, thank you. I always use Misty Fuse. Yes. So, um, so, you, you... I, so, I, so what happened with this was I Misty Fuse this fabric before I cut it. And then I cut it. Um, and... They, um, Lita out here. Um, so sorry, excuse me. Um, Misty Fuse the fabric. They're on the table right there. Um, and then I cut them. So I always do that. Like the butterfly that I had, um, I Misty Fused it. Oh, it's here. Yes. Yeah, so I Misty Fused it as a square. And then I cut it out because it's always easier to misty fuse larger pieces than it is smaller pieces, and then ironed it. So, um, yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, I did forget that most important process is the misty fusing. And then I'll just trim it and cut it, and it's a background. And as you can see on this one, I did some free motion and then I did the pattern stitch. So, that's another fun thing. Use your pattern stitches on your machines, everybody's got them. They all, we, we have more than we could possibly use, and you could just use them on your ATCs and it'd look great. All right. Do you want to show some of the yes. ones that you've collected? Yes. So I have collected a number of them. And you can see, this is actually one that was kind of my first attempt um, and I wanted it to be wonky. So this is actually embroidered. And I took all of this, the um, stabilizer out of it. So it was soft and wonky. So this is a cave flower. And that was using the cave, cave embroidery design. 770 cave embroidery design. Um, this one I did and it is just a collage fabric. And then I wood block printed and paint on here. So I finished them, I cut them. And then I stamped them with, uh, and this is paint. So Elizabeth asked the needle type you recommend when stitching on your ATCs? 90, 90. Um, but just a universal 90? 90. 90 embroidery, 90 universal, yes. 90 whatever's in my machine. Um, so, so some of these I've done. Like you can see, I did these where I just took a piece of lace and cut it apart and put it on there. This one, the same. So I like to just do backgrounds. Um, this is a little bit of what I do with my postcards and use the salvages. And I took some funky fabrics and all I did was did a cross there. Um, this one is, um, who did this one? I, Linda Morgan. Yes, I was going to say Linda Morgan. Look at her 3D little nest and her beads that she put in there. That looks like sorry silk. Yes, uh, it does. I think you're right. Um, this is Rosalie Lamana that did took a piece of these are really small um, crazy quilt pieces. You can use extra blocks if you have them. 
This is another embroidered butterfly with um, beads on it. K Barrow. Um, yeah, so there's all in some indigo, another Linda Morgan 3D. My carrot fell out. Um, so those are all ones I've collected. I've seen people put them in notebooks before to keep them. I found this is, I don't think it's available anymore. Um, and the clips are a little crazy, but you can see, and this is usually in the store um, for samples and, it, and none of them are for sale. They're just there to give you some um, inspiration and just really fun. So that's what I do with mine. Oh, there's a couple more I hid over here. So here, just a martini we just did. And then this is um, with the sari as well, but it's on cardboard. So she sewed beads with floss and did the edging and everything, but this is paper. So again, you can always mix the paper together. Um, you can use ribbons. We have lots of ribbons, and a lot of times you just get scraps of ribbons. So we have these hand-dyed silk ribbons that we put together intro packs of different pieces, and you can, you know, you could just make that be your ATC with a little hand stitching or machine stitching. It's beautiful on its own. So those are all hand-dyed. The other thing is we get a lot of canvas um, and these are ones that I just happen to take because I like the globe. We have smaller ones that maybe are a half an inch wide, but again, this could be your whole ATC. You can be as complicated or as simple as you want. There, there's no, you don't have to go overboard, or if you like to do that, you go for it. We have a range of, of ATCs that are shared at our place, and I'm, Sometimes it's like, oh my God, they're so cool. It's where did they come up with the idea? Beautiful. Yeah, where did they come up with the idea? So, um, and we always post them on the Creative Mind. So you can see again there are some of the ideas for the ATCs as well. So it starts with the gel plate, it starts with your scraps, um, it starts with some paint or artistic artifacts, fabric paint, um, brayers, stencils. You can do a lot of found objects. We have buttons and packs and, and lots and lots of beads. So, you know, it can be a little embellishment um, sample for you as well. And it's fun to trade them. Even if you don't get one back, it's really nice to see somebody's face when they're all excited about what you just handed them. So it's great. Are there any other questions? Okay. I'm talking pretty fast and furious because I have a class that starts at 1030. So I'm going to have to sign off now and wish you a very happy and creative day today. Thank you.